Good morning, world. Welcome to Iowa City, Iowa, home of Thompson & Co. My name is Bobby Thompson, and I was last year's winner of the USA's British Barber Hall of Fame. Now, what we're going to talk about today is doing a little bit of function and dysfunction all in one. What am I talking about? A little party, party in the back, a little business up front? Yeah, that's the mullet. That's right. What better way to do something big and loud like USA does than doing the mullet here today? So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce my, my brave uh, partner over here, Avery. He's going to come on over and we're going to start the process. All right. So if you guys can see, and it's kind of starting to dry up a little bit, I pre-sectioned some of the stuff on Avery's hair using a little bit of molding cream from British Barber. Even though this is going to have a lot of fun and we're going to use a lot of different elements, we're going to use a razor. We're going to use a clipper, okay? Like I said, function, dysfunction, okay? It's still going to be very systematic. And a couple of things that I do just from the very beginning of the start is I understand where and how I'm going to cut. So I did a little bit of pre-cutting just around the sideburn area just because of the mask here that we have to wear. But if you notice, I used my mirror and I created symmetry within the hairline. Now, I did not go to the deepest recession point because I want to leave a little bit of this hair down here to fall. And this is going to be a little bit of a design line, a style uh, aspect that I'm going to use in this haircut. If I go too high up, I may lose the ability not only to use this as a, as a, uh, a PC edge or, or design line, I might go up into a parietal ridge and create a rounding, which is what I do not want to do. What that would do is it would make this hair up here as it grows out, stick out, and it would really push this hair on top up and out. And I do not want that. Okay. So what I'm going to do first, is I'm going to figure out how I want to cut this hair. And a lot of the times, you know, people you'll see will just jump in and start cutting. For me, what I want to do is I want to cut parallel to my section always. So what I'm going to do is using a pair of clippers, I'm just going to go clipper over comb technique. I don't want this to be necessarily perfect, perfect, but I'm going to get it really nice and clean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right above the ear and I'm going to start working parallel to that shape that I want, which is that mullet look. And I'm going to start just going with a slight movement forward and back. Allowing the hair to fall out. Now, if you notice, Avery's got really thick, awesome hair. If I were to cut that too short as that grows in, that's what I was talking about before. You're really going to get some, some issues with the hair pushing and sticking out. Why? Short hair always holds up long hair, and that's where we get in some trouble. So I'm just going to clean up this edge. Now, you can go as long and as short as you want here. This is really the artist's. You know, you get to be the artist, you get to choose. So I'm not going to go to a bald fade or anything like that, but I am going to keep it clean. Starting at the bottom of my section, I'm just going to work out. Now, as I get to the top of the ear, I'm going to see shape down. Uh, it's almost like a crescent moon. If you notice, I open my blade up and I work against the hair grain. This will clean up that edge, and I'm not white walling him because I'm allowing a 45 degree angle with my blade to take that hair down shorter. Now, coming back, I'm not going to go against the grain. I'm going to go with the grain and softly fade that up. Now, one of the things that I'm noticing and that I'm paying attention to is where on the head am I, okay? I'm not going to make a line and fade it out like I would with a really strong, sharp fade, but what I'm doing is I'm understanding the points of this head, where the recession points are, and I'm noticing that I want to keep it low and tapered, so I'm using that deepest recession point as where I'm trying to stay close to with my tapering and my fade. Again, this cut is supposed to have... All the feels of a little dirty, a little nasty, and a little bit of fun. Actually, let's take that back. A lot of bit of fun. 
So I continue to work back and I'm pulling that section out, allowing my clipper to elongate the hair as I come back. I like to do clipper over comb. I do do some guard work. For me, clipper over comb allows me to not only cut the shape of the hair, but also blend the hair at the same time and I'm creating less line. So I got my first side complete. I'll check it in the mirror. I'll come back to the other side. Now I've already had this pre-parted off again. I checked my mirror. I'm constantly checking my mirror for balance. Again, moving in the direction. This is going to be a little bit against the grain because of this colic. I have to be aware of that, but I'm still moving parallel to the shape that I want to create. Things get a little tricky with the mask, guys. There's a couple things that we can do here. It's not inappropriate to ask your guest. So go ahead, Avery, and hold that real quick like that. So hold the mask. I don't know how it is in other places, but I know here in the U.S. and in Iowa City, a lot of places have a mask mandate. It's one of those things. It's been great to get back to barbering. It's been great to get back to cutting hair. We want to stay cutting hair. We want to stay barbering. Do the smart thing, mask up. Now, a lot of times, especially young stylists, you'll see going in here and just digging, really pushing in, pushing in with the tip of their blade, pushing in past the point where they should be. And skin is flexible. This moves, okay? So it's not as hard as I can push. What it is is it's a finesse movement. I'm allowing my blade, and I have a balding blade here from wall, that I'm allowing it to just slightly roll gently and I'm not pushing too hard into the skin to allow that fade to naturally come out. When I feel like the hair is starting to fade the way that I want, I use my clipper to start directing that hair back. And again, leaving that length as I, get to, as I start moving backwards. Here's my C-shape. My crescent moon over the top at a 45 degree angle, going against the grain again. Now, if I cut this too short, which a lot of people do, is they'll come up and cut this. Understand you're going to have a disconnect. The shorter I go here into this area where I'm creating that length, the more disconnect I'm going to have. I don't want a ton of disconnect for this cut. I want a ton of movement. I want a ton of texture. Um, so I'm creating a little bit of length. I want a nice transition point. Now, as I get up into this corner, I move just through the section. Moving this way instead of moving this way also allows me to preserve the length here in the back, which is important. This is where we get a lot of the style points for our Malay. Bring up a little bit of section right here. Down on that third recession point. Notice I keep going back to my, to my bar. Don't be afraid to use that, guys. Lenny bar, a little whammy bar right there. Rock and roll, baby. Now what I'll do, so I feel like I got a good quick fade going, I'll check my balance in the mirror again. I'll take my time to look at the line, and the texture, and the shape. I feel pretty good right now. We got a good start going. Now we've got the hair crease open, and we're going to start moving on to everything up here. Now, this can be done with a shear. This can be done 
with a clipper, really the tool's a tool that you decide to choose and the way that you want your hair to kind of display itself. For me today, it's gonna be the razor. Why do I use the razor? I know us barbers out here, we like to use this on the face. It's also a great tool, great tool when used in the hair. What it does is helps, you know, I can create a really strong shape, but I can also help express texture and movement by opening up my blade and we'll talk about some of those things. Okay, go ahead and sit up a little bit here. I'm gonna get this back for us here. Now, as I start to cut with a razor, there's a couple things I gotta know right off the bat. Safety first, man, okay? This thing is sharp. If you are not comfortable with it right off the bat, there are plenty of blade or guarded razors that you can use that are way more comfortable, especially when you're starting to learn the craft, okay? I've been doing this for a while. I'm gonna use an open blade. I like the open blade. I feel like it creates a little bit more of a direct sharp cut um, and a little bit more of a smoother movement. But things that we want to avoid and things when you know that you're doing it right, you will not have the same tearing that you sometimes hear when you just start moving your hand. Let's talk about that actually real quick, the movement, okay? The movement does not come from my whole arm, okay? Think about energy. As my arm moves, energy is lost through my shoulder, my elbow, my forearm, my wrist, and then finally my finger. This is a controlled movement. It creates a really uh, soft, organic, shapely, PC uh, texture to it, but it's still a very controlled movement. Let's talk about how to open the blade. First, I open, if I am a righty, down, and I make a T. Next, I'm gonna take my V, and I'm gonna place my V underneath the T, okay? I'm gonna rotate, and now I'm engaged, okay? That tang is in my hand, my finger here is control. The movement is not here. It's not here. It's here. So all of my energy is concentrated into my fingertips. So the way I'm going to start is I'm going to have Avery put his head down just a little bit. And this can be done. A lot of people don't realize that this can be done with short hair. There's a lot of control in the movement of the razor and understanding that I have the control when I use my fingertips to to cut hair, and I'm gonna turn over here so you guys can see. I'm gonna take about half inch to quarter inch sections here in the back, okay? And I'm just gonna tuck that hair out. Now you don't want the hair to be wet. You want it to be damp. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take the hair down. Let me get a little bit of moisture here. I'm going to take my spray bottle and I'm not going to soak the hair. I'm just getting it slightly damp. Again, if it's too slippery, it's going to slip through your fingers and that's going to create a lack of tension. You want tension here because if you lose tension, that's when you're going to start ripping and tearing hair. That's when you create a lot of frizz and damage. So again, I'm going to take about a half inch to a quarter inch and see how this bottom part really doesn't give me much to work with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna literally pinch out and pull, and I'm gonna softly with my fingertip, just direct the hair down. Now he's got a couple cowlicks back here. Notice that this cowlick moves up, okay? If I wanna make that cowlick go away, I will work the razor up with it Okay. If I want to make it really disconnected and have a big blunt piece, I'll work straight down. I don't want the bluntness of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow that cowlick just to kind of sit where it is. See how it starts to move this way? I'm going to work my razor tip just with it. And I'm cleaning this up. This doesn't have to be perfect. This is my texture. This is my movement. This is kind of the, the energy of, of the haircut. By keeping his head down, I'm going to start working down no, no. first and this is important I have to understand the difference what happens with hair when I elevate it when I bring it down when I move when I move my feet okay the first thing I am going to start directing my hair straight down this is going to create shape and weight I'm going to start with a more open movement or bigger stroke and finish with a very tiny stroke the reason why that does, I do that is it's going to take a lot of weight out of here in the middle where the hair builds up. 
And as I get to the edge, it's going to clean up the line and make it a little bit more of a, a, or a structured, shapely cut. So again, this is where he has the most amount of hair. I'm going to comb a couple times. I'm going to get my razor started, fingertips, and I'm going to move. And notice I'm not moving at all. What I'm doing is I'm rotating the blade. See the texture of the cut. See the movement. Let's see the shape. It's important. This is gonna express itself very well, even without product, even though we are definitely gonna use some product here. I'm gonna match, or I'm gonna match it on the other side. Direct this down. And again, coming with my fingertips down, getting the blade started. And I'm gonna slowly get smaller with my strokes as I move through it. If I miss a piece, don't go back and cut the whole section again. Literally, just grab, pinch, and cut down. Now, it's important to understand where I'm cutting and how I'm cutting. If I lose my line, reset. I want to have movement and texture in the back here, but I want to remove the weight through here because I don't want it to get heavy. It's going to be hard for him to style. So if I, ha if I have to, I'm going to, again, keep moving a little bit bigger movements to the middle and out, taking that weight out. Now let's talk about how I cut the hair itself. Again, I'm going to continue down this last section. He's got a lot of thick hair, so I'm going to start elevating here in a second. But when I'm moving close to his head, and I'm moving from the right to the left as a righty. I'm gonna start on what we call the heel of the blade or the inside. I'm gonna move my fingertip, get it started. And I'm trying to stay connected with the hair throughout the cut, meaning I'm gonna have hair hitting the blade the entire time. And if I have to re-comb just that edge, I will re-comb. And our textures begin. Okay. Now, as a righty moving to the right side, I am going to take the hair down. And instead of working on my heel, I'm going to work on my toe. Again, my hand is not elevated, getting the blade started. There we go. Recomb. Pinch. I got a couple pieces that kind of came out on me. We're getting some fun movement back here. I'm gonna take another piece. Now watch what I'm gonna do as I start to get into the actual meat and potatoes of our haircut. Okay, one, I left all that length here. That's why I cut on my initial parting down right here. I left this length because if I were to take this too far back, I'm gonna lose this length and I'm gonna lose this pieciness. Haircuts should stay relatively square. A lot of times you see people take this rounded loop here. What that's going to do is that's going to take off any squareness here in the back. I like to take my haircut when I part it straight down, and that creates a square line. Okay, It's exactly what we did here. We just moved it up to the point there. Now we have all of this to create texture and movement as we come forward. So now, again... 
report. Now, I don't use clips. Um, and the reason is, is I feel like if I can get the hair to move by turning my comb in and pushing out, I can really direct that hair. If I have some hair that's just being a little too stubborn, or if I just, it's a comfort thing and you feel com more comfortable using clips, go ahead, okay? If I feel that I'm gonna be, if I need to use my hands, I mean the best brush and the best comb you have is gonna be your fingers. Now, party down again in the middle, move my hair out of here that I'm not gonna cut. We're gonna take, this next section is gonna change a little bit. Now, his hair is a little bit shorter through here, so I don't wanna go as short, but notice I'm elevating. What that's gonna do is it's gonna help remove weight and it's gonna help that, that movement. Remember that short hair pushes that long hair up, so this is gonna create this little bit of movement throughout this area. I'm gonna take it in my hands, elevate it up. And again, working on the heel. If I feel like I'm starting to hear a tearing sound or a ripping sound, I either need to re-moisture, rise the hair, or take a new parting. Don't be afraid to resection, repart. Now, if I'm doing this correctly, you're gonna start seeing this hair kind of follow a line, okay? I'm working down and I'm working out. If I were to step over and move my body, I'm gonna cut that corner down shorter. Again, I wanna create this length, I like this length. I wanna be able to go back later on and decide what I wanna do with that length. So again, going back to where I was cutting before, I'm using a pretty generous stroke. Go to this side. And I'm starting in the middle where I can see my guideline. Right here, okay, and I'm gonna work out. This is gonna create balance. Again, it's a razor, but razors can be absolutely effective in creating really symmetrical, balanced haircuts. Again, I'm elevating out, using the toe of my blade this time, resectioning when I need to. And obviously guys, we're talking through this. You're gonna be talking to your guests. You're gonna be talking about what you're doing. You're gonna be having fun. The reason why it's important to stay structured throughout this is that if you don't, it's really easy to get lost. Do not get lost in the cut because it's really hard to find your way back. Feel through, pretty dang balanced. Okay, now I come to the crown. Now here's where a guy will have a colic, okay? If I have a colic that wants to move up, okay, I will treat that as top of his head. If it wants to move down, I'll treat that as the bottom of his head. Avery here, his colic's right dead in the center up there. So I don't really have to worry about it too much. I kind of just toss the hair around and see where it wants to live, where it wants to lay. I'm gonna start right here in the dead center. 
in the back of his crown. And now I'm going to direct this completely out. If you feel like you're tearing through hair or ripping through hair, a couple things can happen. One, it's really easy to forget what the blade should look like. The blade should be at a 45 degree angle coming down on top of the hair. So when I'm doing it, I'm not going parallel and sliding it. I'm coming at it where the blade is sharp. Because this is, you're, you're cutting hair at this point. Now notice as I come up, see where my texture meets my structure, okay? It's a cool look. It's gonna make your haircut stand out. Avery's got an itch. It's cool. <laughs> you guys, I don't know where you are in the world right now. It is, what time is it guys? Probably 7 a.m. here in Iowa City. And we are having fun. So again, I'm gonna start in the middle. I'm gonna work way, my way out. Now see how that little cowlick wants to kind of pop down? Okay, a lot of people would tuck that up and out of the way. I, want, I know that that wants to come down. I'm gonna let it come down. The reason for that is that this that's going to act like hair that's on the bottom of the haircut and it's going to be more affected by gravity coming down this way than moving it up that way. Again, I'm using a pretty aggressive stroke. This is supposed to be fun. I want it to be kind of wild and crazy. Like I said, it's 7 a.m. But if you knew my buddy Avery here, he's a wild man. He likes to have fun himself. And this haircut's gonna match his personality perfectly. Now, one of the things that we haven't talked about that I think is kind of important to talk about is consultation. I'm not gonna put this on my grandpa, obviously. Um, but, you know, talk to your clients, ask them what they like. You know what I mean? A lot of times people step behind a chair and ask, hey, what do you want? A lot of times they don't know. You know, one of the things that I like to ask is, what do you like about your hair? What would you change about your hair? I listen, I watch what their hands do. If their hands move to a certain point, that usually tells me that they're having issues with that point or they like that point of their haircut. A lot of times you see them touch here or here, okay? For me, that's, use, the, use the indications that they're giving you, okay? Um, but then if you ask what you like and what you change, that way there's two things that happen. One, you're gonna sit there and you hear that, you're gonna be able to prescribe and create something specifically for them that they're gonna be happy with. Two, they're gonna see value in you because they're gonna be able to see that you're really thinking about their haircut and not just somebody else's haircut. So now as I move up, I wanna keep that, again, that little, that little line. So I'm gonna move at a little bit of an angle because I'm gonna create some length as we go forward here. I'm gonna take this a little shorter through this area and drop it down. Okay, I want that style, that angle, that style line. This is up to you where you want to put this. Okay, just throwing it out there. Again, aggressive movements in my cut. And I'm okay if it disconnects, especially up here at the top. Again, good partings. Moving up. Oh. 
and up. Notice I am elevating the hair again as I move away from its head, taking out more weight. If you want this to be a really heavy line, okay, make sure you're dropping the hand down. I want texture and movement this way. Now this is my parietal ridge. As I start to jump above it into the top of his hair, okay? See, I move from here, from here to here, okay? This is where I can kind of start creating some short pieces. What I do, it's easy. Instead of trying to reach up and jump up like this, I'm just gonna have him tilt his head down towards me. Work smarter, not harder. Still staying on the heel of that blade. Working my way forward. Gonna create a lot of texture up through the top of the haircut. Elevating out. Now notice, even though I'm direct, pulling directly out, I'm elevating up here, okay, which is now gonna be on top of his head. This is gonna create that like spiky effect. Rock and roll, guys, rock and roll. And he has a ton of hair. Again, I repeat, he has a ton of hair. So I can be more aggressive with my movements than what I would be with somebody that doesn't have a lot of hair. Does it mean that I can't use a razor to cut their hair? No, I can't, okay? But my movement, instead of being really wide and open like this, is gonna go to a really small movement, okay? I'm creating structure. Now, same thing on this side. Guess what? I'm gonna leave it be because we're gonna deal with the front in a second. If you notice, a lot of times hair moves up and down and all around here. We have to identify this pre cut. It's got a lot of hair, like I said. But a lot of times, if somebody pulls this forward and cuts this here, right this, I'm gonna show this piece here. I want him to be able to wear his hair down and straight in front of his face. So we're gonna give him a pretty aggressive bang here in a second. I got to check cowlicks and things like that, obviously, before I do that normally. That's going to do a couple things, though. One, I'm going to allow to create a straight line across if I want it, being very aggressive by making sure I'm working out and protecting that length. Two, the shorter hair that I'm going to do here in front is going to help hold up the hair when he decides to spike it up. Kind of wear it a little bit wild. Again, tilt his head down. Check my length. I did it right. 
Okay, you can see all the texture, but see how it creates a slight angle in the front? That almost perfect triangle? That means I'm balanced. I cut that correctly. This, I can take off with the shear if I want. If I want to create some more, some more height or some more texture through there. To me, I kind of like it. I think it's kind of a cool style point if he wants to move and direct the hair to the middle at any point. But we're balanced. So now, bangs. Again, I could leave this haircut. I could have him sweep it, push it, you know, texturize it, do whatever he wants in a messy, cool, uh, you know, style that he has. For me, I want to see a little bit more aggressive line. So I'm going to push his bangs out of his face. And a lot of the times you see people where they will start like a, a triangle pattern or something of that nature. To me, I'm dealing with this point down here, so I need to deal with this hair right here as well. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work from the center out, okay? And the reason why I work from the center out is that creates balance again. He's got a cowlick that's pretty aggressive right here, okay? I'll either have to tell him about blow drying or I'll have to cut above a certain point to make sure that we get enough weight on that hair to lay that down, okay? How do I find that out? I pick it up, I push on it. Where it bends, if I cut above that, I'm gonna lose control of that hair. It's that simple, okay? So I'm gonna start a little bit lower here. I'm gonna direct that hair down again, and I'm gonna shorten and tighten up my, my movement. Again, you can still create line. Now as I start moving into that corner again, pinch and pull. Pinch. I'm gonna use the flat now because I'm gonna create a little bit of elevation and layering because I don't want it to be perfectly straight. I'm just gonna pull that down right there in the corner, like so. I don't mind that little bit of weight, but see how it's got that little gnarliness to it, which I think is dope. I'm gonna start in the middle again. Take my hair here, push it back. And I'm gonna, this time, because I don't mind a little bit of height, I have my line. I'm gonna take, let that hair fall out. I'm gonna open my blade a little more. I'm gonna work down. And I'm gonna pinch again. I'm just gonna come in here and create a little texture. Yes, I'm going up a little bit higher into where I said that curl line was. I'm just softening though. Now I'm going to pull it down. We're pretty dang close, man. We got the start of our bang. Now, I'm going to hop to the other side real quick. Again, my parting is going to be parallel to his hairline. Okay, I'm gonna direct it down. Okay, using the tip of my blade. Small, little, tight, strokes. Creating that line, creating that texture. Cutting below the curl line.
I'm gonna pinch and pull. It's very Lloyd Christmassy from Dumb and Dumber right now, and I'm cool with that. Okay, again, this is my this is my interpretation of what I want this hair to cut to express. It's my interpretation of what I think Avery can rock and will rock. I want this to be different. If I want this to be a little bit more subtle or contained or relaxed, again, I can leave the bangs longer. This is my interpretation. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and here. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking where before I wanted the 45 degree angle. Now I'm actually going a little bit more parallel and just in on these edges. I'm just softening up that texture. Okay, check them here. Now, I can come through and I can hit this with a shear, clean up the edges. I can come through, I can take out some more weight and I can personalize. For me, it's a little heavy right here. So I'm gonna take out some of this weight where we had that triangle that we talked about. I wanna see that movement, I wanna see that texture. I'm gonna direct back and I'm just gonna open up that blade. And I'm actually using the flat now, so the middle part, to remove that weight. Again, if I need him to, I can tilt him back a little bit. All right, now, you can see the blade itself with minimal product in there creates a lot of movement, a lot of texture as is. The back tells a story. It's got his party moving, but we're still clean through his edges, through his edges. I'm gonna take my misting bottle I'm gonna break up a little bit of the weight. And this is where I'm just gonna define what I want the cut, the final cut to look like. Pinch and pull. Cool. Keep going back. We're gonna clean it up. Get a little bit of powder in there. Now normally guys, I would blow dry this or do something else just for the camera, for the sound quality. I'm just going to clean it up with some talc powder. Then we're going to use a little bit of BBA. We got the texturizing clay here. I'm not going to use much right here. Now, this is what kills me when I see some of my guests. Some of my guys, the way that they actually put product in their hair. Okay. I was telling them to blow dry it, towel dry it, whatever they need, down and up. Okay. Again, you can do it however you want, but this is just my personal style tip. Get the product in my hand. Emulsify it. Cover my hand here, but then I also cover my hand here. I'm going to get a bit better distribution of that product. I'm going to take, starting in the back, I'm going to use my hand 
and I'm going to rub it through all over. The wild man is what we call that. But one thing that's cool is you can actually see balance wise. It's a balanced haircut. Now I'm going to use my fingertips almost like a big brush. And I'm just going to direct and move and express the texture that I want to see where I want to see it. Don't mat the hair down, don't flatten it down. But again, use your hair as a big brush. Use your mirror. Let's create something cool. If you wanna get close real quick. You guys, wherever you're at in the world, whatever you're doing, do it great. Put your passion and love into it because they're going to feel it. They're going to know that you really care. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, this afternoon, this evening. We'll see you soon.